what is the body of Christ? So we read in um, Romans 12, and I'll show you a couple of verses, but the body of Christ is every believer. Every believer, everybody that's saved and born again makes up uh, the body of Christ. And we see here in Romans uh, 12, 4 and 5, for as we have many members in one body, so it's saying many basically parts, many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and everyone members one of another. Uh, let's see this as well in 1 Corinthians 12. Oops. 27. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. And then it goes on to say that God had put, has put authority in the church and the different offices that can be there. Uh, let's look as well in Ephesians 5, verse 30. Um, you know, let's look, look here. That he might, and we see here the link here between the church and the body as well. For he might, that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Um, so we see there that, you know, the members or the, the church, which are the people, uh, are the body of Christ. So how do, does one uh, join the body of Christ? So well, let's have a look at a couple of verses there. Um, 1 Corinthians, let's go back to 1 Corinthians 12. And when we were there just before. So we see, we've seen that every believer... Uh, makes up the body of Christ. We see also that the church is referred to as the body of Christ. Um, now, how does somebody join the body of Christ? Well, you join the body of Christ when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you are baptized with the Holy Ghost. So you remember when we talked about the topic of baptism, there's the baptism with water that represents the baptism of the Holy Ghost and that's why we're baptized by immersion. But the baptism of the Holy Ghost is actually what adds us to the body of Christ. And we see here, we already read uh, in this chapter, but it says here in verse 12, For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jew or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have, made, uh, and have been all made to drink into that one spirit. Now I want you to just note there, because we're going to uh, read this a bit later on, but just note there that you know we're baptized into one body by the Holy Ghost, by the Spirit, uh, so there's neither Jew nor Gentile, neither bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. So the drinking of the Spirit there. Uh, just uh, note that in the back of your mind. Romans 6, we'll see the same concept here. Know ye not... Verse 3, that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So I believe there that that baptism is talking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost being baptized into Christ. Uh, we see also in Galatians 3.27, that same phrase again. But as many of you as has, have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So we saw that similar thought there in 1 Corinthians 12 where it said there's neither Jew nor Gentile. Um, there is neither Jew nor Greek here. All right, so that's what the body of Christ is. The body of Christ is every believer. You join the body of Christ by getting saved. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You are baptized by the Holy Ghost into the body of Christ, into Jesus Christ. And the last point I just want to make about the body of Christ, uh, we'll go to Ephesians. 
Ephesians 2 verse 11. The last point I just want to make about the body of Christ is I believe that there is only one body. So there's only one, I guess in a sense, universal body. I know we stray away from that word because of the, the universal church doctrine. But there is one universal body. Every believer is part of this one body. There are not multiple bodies. I just want to show you this in Ephesians 2. Uh, Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. So just notice here that there's the comparison between Gentiles, which are basically any nation besides Israel, and then you have the, the Jews, which are the nation of Israel. Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, so there's the Gentiles, by that which is called the circumcision, that's what, what is a, a Jew, in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. So aliens there being, meaning that you're not a citizen of a nation. You're an alien, not an extraterrestrial. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one. So these, these nations, the gent Jews and, and every other nation, which are the Gentiles, so this includes everybody, right? For he is, he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. So because of the blood of Christ, that wall that divided Jew and Gentile is now abolished and we are made one. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain, there's the two, one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body, there's that one body, by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. So, you know, I believe that supports the fact that there is one body, the fact that every nation, um, Christ has broken down that middle wall of petition and made us all one body. And if that's not clear enough, if we just go down further to chapter 4, it says here, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavouring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Here we go. There is one body and one Spirit even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you, in, in you all. Now, I think some people may, may resist this you know, one body doctrine, the, the fact that every believer is one body because we do not believe in a universal church. You know, I don't believe in a universal church, and I'll get onto that in a moment when I talk about the church. But I think it's very clear in the Bible that there is one body that everyone is a part of. Not only in Ephesians 2, where it's saying every nation has now come, become one nation through the blood of Christ. But also here it says there is one body. And, and somebody might say, well, you know, this is just talking about the local church, like we're one body, but another church is another body. But that doesn't fit the context of what's being said here because it says there is one body and then it says there is one spirit. And then it, then it goes on to say there's one Lord and one faith and one baptism, which I believe is talking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost and then the baptism with water is just representing that one baptism and one God of Father of all. So there aren't multiple spirits, multiple independent spirits. There aren't multiple independent, you know, um, you know, lords and faiths and baptism. There is one of these, and that's why I think this verse is very clear that there is one body of Jesus Christ. So that's the body of Christ. 